Next question comes from Jorge. Uh, can a K-1 beneficiary add his or her assets in uh, a, with the petitioner's assets? Well, the short answer is, is yes, they can. Uh, unfortunately, there's, there's quite a few hoops to jump through when uh, using qualifying assets. And also, I, I want to just add one uh, caveat or one note is that everything comes down to the discretion of the consular officer or the adjudicating officer that's reviewing your case. What that means is that uh, it's up to them whether they accept the assets. Back to uh, you know the, the part where they do accept assets, um, it comes down to what type of assets you're going to use. If it's cash, uh, you know, gold or you know, stocks, bonds, things like that. Something that you can liquidate rather quickly, usually within a 12-month period. Uh, at least the instructions in the affidavit of support state that you can use those assets. Uh, if you're using property, uh, such as a house, a condo, or something like that, uh, that's a little more challenging, a little more difficult, because first of all, you have to prove that you have ownership in said property. You also have to provide uh, documents from uh, the mortgage company. If you have a, a loan or a lien on the property, you have to provide a copy of the deed. Um, you also, if, if you owe a, you know, a certain amount on the property, um, you can only use the difference between uh, you know, what you, I guess the equity that you have in the property. Uh, but I can tell you from experience, we've processed quite a few of these and uh, many consular officers out there, many adjudicating officers at USCIS do not always accept um, these assets. And also keep in mind, you have to have a third party, um, you know, an assessment of the property. They have to appraise it. Um, and you can't just um, put down on paper what you think the property is worth. It actually has to be appraised. And then again, like I said, you have to pro provide all the documents showing you own the property. It's really best to, to probably just uh, come out and meet the income requirements. And if you don't, you may consider using uh, what is called a joint sponsor. Uh, that is someone else uh, that signs an affidavit of support that meets the income requirements. Uh, the reason why I bring that up is, uh, like I said, we've, we've seen folks try to use assets and it's just, it's a bumpy road to go down uh, at best. Yeah, one thing I would add is that assets aren't, aren't uh, valued as highly. Uh, mm -hmm. as, as income, uh, they're going to count, if it's for a child, minor child or a spouse, they're going to value it at one-third. So, for example, if you have a $75,000, uh, say, equity in your home, they're only going to credit you with twenty five. dollars mm -hmm. So they're go that's equal to about 25000 in income, 75000 If it's for a parent or somebody else, a sibling, mm -hmm. uh, it's even worse. It's one-fifth of the value. So that same $75,000 asset is only worth $15,000. Towards the meeting the threshold, so assets are tricky, as Rick says. It's it's always best to get a joint sponsor if that's possible. Now, we do have we we have had people use assets, but the assets that that uh, that seem to sail through are the ones that are very liquid uh, and are very easily verified through third party evidence, such as your mortgage. Uh, your mortgage statement and a recent certified appraisal showing that you got 100,000 equity in your home, or your uh, TD Ameritrade statement showing that you've got some investment accounts, those kind of things. And since your specific question was about uh, the foreign spouse, that's even harder. Uh, you know, it's going to depend on the country and, and, and a lot of things. But yes, the spouse's income can be used, or assets can be used if it's the intending spouse is, is the intending immigrant. But they're going to count as one third, and they uh, they got to be legit. Now, one thing I also throw in there that we that we actually saw happen. Uh, it's been four or five years ago now, but uh, we had a, a couple. It was it happened to be a young couple from the UK, and uh, the parents were very much in favor of the union and so on, and so they transferred some money out. It was fifty thousand or something to the to the account of the couple so that they could say, look at this, assets we got in the bank. Well, the adjudicator didn't buy it. Uh, you know, if you, you can't have, they're, they're not dumb is the bottom line. You can't have your mom or somebody that trusts you stick a bunch of money in your account while you get approved, and then, of course, they're going to take it back later. They're going to see right through that, which is, in fact, what happened, uh, that the money wasn't on deposit for a year, and so uh, they, didn't, they refused to count it. The, the couple did end up getting approved, and, and it all got worked out. 
but they were not able to use that particular money because uh, the adjudicator saw right through that ruse. So don't try to trick these guys. You're not going to come up with something they haven't thought of. If you found this video useful, it would mean a lot to us if you could hit the like button and comment below to let us know what you think. You can also ask your own immigration questions in the comments below. If you want to make sure not to miss any of our future videos, we invite you to subscribe here on YouTube and be sure to click the notification icon so you can be alerted whenever we publish a new video. Also, don't forget to follow us on Facebook where you can watch our regular immigration Q&A live streams. 